You're good to rock and roll, man. I'm heading out to check around the project area. So we're not sure of what to expect. Uh, it's always a surprise. It's a beautiful morning, a bright sky. Definitely be a good flight. I'm a pilot for Wildlife Fox doing aerial surveillance. This morning, I was able to sight several wildlife distributed around the project area, plus a few human activities, about 115 kilometers from here. We do do our aerial surveillance mostly to monitor wildlife if they're moving towards areas that are prone to poaching activities and also they're looking for the legal grazing, cutting down of trees that is a habitat destruction. So we take the gathered data, and we took a GPS coordinates, and also we have a clue up which uh, gives you the details of all the activities which has happened today. Like you can see the number of elephants, so uh, illegal cattle grazing, and there's human activity. This is charcoal kiln, so we do record them now, the app. Good morning, everybody. How are you? We are good. Yep. See, we are back from flying. Can you show us some focus what we've seen today? So that was my flight pattern. Yeah. Yeah, and those are my sightings. Mm -hmm. uh, that's illegal grazing, eh? I think. Yeah. Yeah, and some goats here, I think. So after we come back from flight. I do hand over the data to Moses, and Moses do a liaison with our ground team who are on patrol. If there is any illegal activity going on, Moses here send the coordinates to them so that they can go and track, do monitoring, and have more inquiry about whatever is going on in the ground. Growing up as a young African boy, hunting is a normal thing for substantial food, and until I started uh, learning that um, uh, the importance of conserving wildlife and started shifting my perspective of poaching from a substantial aspect to an illegal activity. Wow, an amazing weather today. Yes, morning, Chris. Morning to you. How are you? Oh, good, good, man. Yeah. How have you been? I'm fine. <clears throat> really foggy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Fog and cloudy. We are now heading to one of my former primary school where I used to study when I was a young kid. We are heading there to give a motivational talk to uh, young boys and girls and uh, share my story to them. I did grow up around this area. We live just a few kilometers from here. To go to Nasomea, Chinia, meet you, Nadia, and get to Good morning. Good morning. So, can you raise your hand like this and bring them together? Then do this. Pasta, 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 and say chapati. Now that looks great, then we can get seated. Just the same way you guys are sitting here, I used to sit in the same place. So generally, the co-pilot here, I used to sit here, I used to 
walk all the way from home to here, barefooted, not wearing shoes like you're wearing today. We used to sleep uh, on the ground during the night, not on beds like you guys are sleeping nowadays. And beside all that, I stick my focus on whatever I wanted to be. Uh, my dream job, which was to become a pilot, and I stick to that. Today, I'm happy to be conserving the same trees that we used to distract them for firewood and charcoal, and the protect the same wildlife, which initially, when I was young, I used to know they are meant to be poached. We didn't know that uh, we need to conserve them so that our future generation can come and see them. What values should you have when you want to be a pilot? First of all, you can't be a pilot without working harder. If you want to be a pilot, you need to do really great in maths. Eh? So you need to do good in your subject first. Then you need to be good in your decision making. You do it some other as you can get your wings. If your wings are not full, or if your wings are not full, isn't it? My first encounter with the aeroplane was 2012. I was just doing uh, aircraft cleaning, and I fell in love with the aircraft and uh, started to learn more and more. So I started to do supervised maintenance with uh, engineers who used to come to do the maintenance with me here. So I did that for about three years before heading to college. Here I am today, maintaining and flying this machine that I use to clean them. We're heading to the community today to have a football match with the youth. The main thing that I like about the community is the transformation that's happening now. People engaging in, into environmental activities, getting environmental concern. Approaching it's a, it's a kind of a really sensitive thing here because people used to poach uh, that much here. Like uh, lots of our rangers, uh, some of them were used to be poachers. Yes, chairman, you better live. Hmm. Yeah, we will see him. Fit, eh? Fit, fit. Ah, sant. Coaches? Yes. But I'm a sick boy. Oh, son of a good salama. Ashkuru. Caribo. Okay. 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 Every session after the game, I usually talk to them, spend like five to ten minutes. Yeah, I probably see lots of them, better pilots than I am today. Yeah, because they actually get it from first-hand information from me, other than reading on books and, yeah. I have uh, plans of going into deep into conservation and also uh, expand my studies in uh, engineering. I won't be here doing the same forever, so we are advocating for young kids to come out, join hands in the conservation sector, so that once I'm out, someone can take the relay and uh, push the same activity forward and done even better than I have done today. I just wanted to be a pilot initially when I was young, but once I learned the importance of conservation, then I fall in love with conservation and decided to be a conservation pilot. Whenever I'm out uh, for long, then I miss the air and miss the beautiful view, beautiful adventure I have every morning flying around, watching the beautiful wildlife, such a lovely, view from above.